Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar titled Being an Influencer for Social Policy, an Injury Prevention Perspective, facilitated by the Fall Prevention Community of Practice. My name is Shamiza Allard, and I am the Knowledge Coordinator at the Ontario Neurotrauma Foundation, also known as ONF. ONF sponsors the Fall Prevention Communities of Practice, Loop and Loop Junior, along with the annual Fall Prevention Month campaign. So before we begin, I just wanted to give you just cover of just a few housekeeping items. So during the webinar, if you have any questions about the technology, uh, please type them into the webinar chat box. Uh, my colleague Marguerite and I will be monitoring this. You can also email me at shamiza.olard at onf.org, and I'll work with you to resolve any um, technical issues. If you have any questions uh, for our presenters about the webinar, please submit them through the Q&A box. They will be answered at the end of the webinar. And as a note, you'll only be able to view questions that you have asked, not questions posed by other participants. So the webinar is being recorded and a YouTube link will be sent to all participants in about one week along with the presentation slides. You can view previous webinar recordings by simply heading over to the Loop webinar page and clicking see our archived webinars. So I'd like to now introduce our presenters, Chantal Walsh and Jennifer Russell. Chantal is a health promotion specialist with the Child Safety Link Program at the IWK Health Center in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Jennifer is the Executive Director for the Atlantic Collaborative on Injury Prevention. For a complete bio of our presenters, please view the Zoom webinar invitation or checkout loop. So now without further ado, please take it away, Chantal and Jennifer, you may now share your screen. Great, thank you so much, Shamiza. Wonderful introduction and welcome everyone to our presentation today. Uh, as mentioned, Shamiza shared with you that we're presenting on being an influencer for social policy and looking at that from the injury and injury prevention perspective. I did want to just note and, and bring your attention to the fact that uh, the goal of our presentation today is to highlight the information we found to be useful in introducing the role of influencer for and in social policy. The information being presented is meant to bring awareness to the variety of roles that may become involved in influencing social policy from the perspective of injury prevention. And we'll revisit this again towards the end of our webinar today. Next slide, please. As Shamiza already introduced us, uh, I'm Chantal Walsh, a health promotion specialist with Child Safety Link at the IWK Health Center. And my colleague is also here. I'll allow her to introduce herself as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Russell. Um, as Shamiza mentioned, I'm the executive director with the Atlanta Collaborative on Injury Prevention. Uh, which is a partnership of uh, government and non-government uh, organizations that work to prevent injuries. Uh, so today's presentation is um, the uh, final presentation as part of our social policy series. Um, so Child Safety Link and ASIP have collaborated on several pieces of work uh, related to fall prevention and social policy. Um, and that's where these presentations um, have been developed. The first presentation occurred back in 2019, and it was the first presentation where collaboratively we introduced the links between the social determinants of health, fall prevention, and social policy. Um, and then in November of 2019, um, we did a webinar where we looked at social policies in Atlantic Canada with some links specifically to children's fall prevention. Um, and then this brings us to today where we um, will look at uh, a new document that we developed um, called Being an Influencer for Social Policy Using an Injury um, per Prevention Perspective. Uh, and this will really offer a reflection of why social policy is important for our work um, in injury prevention and fall prevention. Uh, with lots of examples of the different ways in which stakeholders um, can work to influence social policy. So we have a couple of poll questions to start us off. Um, and this is just for us to 
uh, learn about where and what your role is in the field for those who are participating today. We'll get Shamiza to launch those. So we have representation from looks like mostly across Canada, which is good. Okay, so again, a wide variety of sectors represented on the webinar today. And our final poll question um, is around the role in which you currently work in. Okay, so we have quite a bit of healthcare and injury prevention specialists with us today. So that's great and uh, look forward to um, highlighting some of these roles in our examples um, further in the presentation. Um, so I'm gonna pass it back to um, Chantel um, to go through presentation outline. Great, thank you. So for today, our outline looks like this, we're going to talk about what social policy is through definition and providing some examples. A little bit of a background and context between ASIP and Child Safety Link and what collaboration we've been able to accomplish to date. Then looking at the details of being an influencer for social policy, the document that we're speaking to today, as well as an infographic that has been, pre pre been prepared. Uh, how you can use this report and infographic and also examples of how to influence. We do have a few links to resources that we can provide towards the end and there will be time for questions um, following the presentation as well. Next slide. So firstly, looking at what social policy is in more of a definition form, uh, it includes a range of benefits, programs, supports, that protect citizens through various life changes that can affect their health. Social policy functions as a social safety net to ensure that people are not negatively impacted by these life changes, whether they're positive or negative. And social policy also considers, also considers the different roles of society, governments, communities, individuals, and other agencies in providing supports and services across the lifespan. So it was nice to revisit it just to see what it is that we're speaking to specifically. So a few concrete examples of social policy um, that are highlighted in through the document and that we're going to introduce. Um, the document actually does include a section on how social policy is created. Uh, so we do encourage you to re refer to that for more comprehensive overview. But in order to pull out some of those examples today, those can include family allowances, childcare, employment insurance, um, home care programs, disability benefits, there's child benefit, family housing. So a wide variety of social policies that exist currently in Atlantic Canada specifically. Next slide. Why is social policy important for injury prevention? So you may find yourself asking yourselves out that specific question. Social policy initiatives can reduce injuries by improving social and economic conditions and enabling individuals to increase control over and improve various aspects of their health. And our next slide uh, includes an example that I'll walk us through. So we know that the determinants of health influence the health of the population, the wider population. 
uh, and that systemic barriers prevent people from reaching their full health potential. So social policy can actually contribute to improving the conditions under which people live by contributing to safe and adequate environments, lifestyles, some of which include housing, childcare, transportation, as well as personal, social, and health services. And on our current slide, there's an example indicating income as our social determinant of health that we're highlighting uh, and what factors can result from lower income, so poor living conditions, um, and then where social policy can insert itself or how we can look at social policy to essentially provide financial assistance, for example, to lower income families with children specifically, uh, and how that money could be put towards safety equipment um, to ultimately prevent falls in the home. So it's just one example that demonstrates the impact of social policy or a specific social policy that could then decrease the risk for injuries. Now I'll pass it back to you, Jen, for a little bit of the breakdown of background and uh, context to today. Thank you. And I will try and speak uh, more loudly. I did see um, that it was a bit hard to hear me, so I will do my best to speak loudly. Um, so yes, um, some background and context. Um, how this work all started um, was really um, did come out of fall prevention um, and our efforts to participate in some fall prevention activities. Um, so as mentioned earlier, um, we uh, back in 2019, um, we hosted a, a webinar here again on loop. Um, and this was really about um, introducing the links between the social determinants of health, um, fall prevention, and um, really introducing that social policy lens. Um, the uh, webinar was, um, we received lots of positive comments, um, but, and there was a clear interest in learning more about this topic. Um, and a few of the questions and discussions uh, from that webinar, we've actually used to help inform um, our next steps, including uh, the work that we're talking about um, with you today. Um, so following that webinar, we did send a, a follow-up survey to participants. Um, we really wanted to understand if people were already participating in social policy activities, um, what some of the barriers or challenges there may be to, um, to, to participating in social policy activities um, and any of the work that they were um, experiencing around this topic. So majority of respondents uh, we had um, respond to that survey were from Nova Scotia and Ontario. Um, we did have several other responses um, from some of the Atlantic provinces and, and some of our national partners as well. Um, and respondents um, included those from clinical and healthcare, public health, family resource centers, government, um, non, the nonprofit sector, as well as uh, long-term care. And uh, from this, we really just wanted to demonstrate that um, the work um, is important for uh, fall prevention and injury prevention across all ages. So what we really heard is that um, this applies across the lifespan. So we really wanted to, to make sure we highlighted that um, and listening to these types of responses to inform our next steps um, in this work. So some of the highlights from that survey um, were around, as mentioned, the, the barriers to, to social policy. So um, the barrier sort of um, came under two categories. So um, buy-in was one of, one of the sort of standout categories. So um, difficult to get stakeholders to accept um, that it's a system um, that they manage and, and that change um, takes time. So um, it's often a lot easier to um, implement um, you know, small programs or or um, activities that see um, a much short term, a much shorter term um, achievement, um, rather than the impact that's seen at a systems change level. So those longer term benefits, um, and getting buy-in to support funding for these types of activities um, when it may not be the primary focus of the department or organization, um, and getting the buy-in from decision makers. There was another. Um, sort of theme that came out, which was around control. So 
um, stakeholders who may be considered at the bottom of a decision making hierarchy um, often left to do some of the individual um, specific interventions related to knowledge and skills and increasing awareness and not necessarily inf being able to influence legislation, um, or at least they thought so in a meaningful way. Um, and uh, sort of a lack of understanding or, or fear around um, minimal resources uh, or supports in place um, to, to be able to mobilize this type of, this type of work. So we did um, have some questions around what participants of the survey thought would be some opportunities um, or some recommendations they had um, to help um, sort of build the gaps for these barriers and challenges. Um, and so these were provided by respondents. These are these were not um, these are not opportunities or recommendations that we've come up with, um, but certainly we we've. we've um, We've collated these and used these again to inform um, the work that we're going to um, present on here in a few slides. So um, again, a theme being around education and knowledge translation um, around the social determinants of health and health equity, being able to influence those decision makers on some policy changes, um, awareness um, and social media use, and then um, building on social policy and the social terms of health and other educational opportunities. Our collaboration and coordination also came out. So um, working together to address some of these policy issues, continuing to engage through platforms such as Loop, where we um, are able to work collectively, um, sharing resources and information, um, and just contributing to other injury prevention networks. So, um, these opportunities and recommendations, again, were not developed by ASIP or Child Safety Link, but we're certainly um, working towards um, some of these and how they fit within our capacity and our mandates. But we hope by sharing these, um, perhaps there's opportunities that may align with the work that you're doing or, or plan to do in the future. And what we found through these sort of higher, higher level themes was that we could see the barriers and the challenges and even the opportunities and recommendations provided um, by responses. We're highlighting some of the already known roles in social policy activities. Um, so, and we could see that we needed to spend more time on raising awareness of what social policy is and the role that it has in injury prevention. So th there still remains some confusion on what it was. Um, and some still couldn't make the link to activities that they may already be doing. So even those small actions that people felt like they weren't um, able to make a big change, um, those small actions collectively can actually have a big impact um, and influence um, various aspects of, of social policy. Um, and we also wanted to ensure that we raised awareness around that, um, you know, to, to influence social policy, you don't have to create social policy. Um, and we'll be able to provide some of those examples uh, uh, further on in the presentation. And, and you may hear us repeat that a bit, but um, that was really the foundation to the work um, that, we, that we've been doing around social policy and its role in injury prevention. And to cite to further that in follow up to the survey results, uh, here's a glimpse of just some of what we've mentioned in our introduction as far as the continued presentation series that we've begun and, and followed through with. So the social policy policies in Atlantic Canada report uh, is highlights links to children's fall prevention, um, looking at it through an environmental scan lens. The middle report that you see on your screen is the being an influencer for social policy. So the report that we're speaking to today and we'll get into further uh, in the next few slides as well as the infographic that's in support of this document. So how, demonstrating and depicting how you can influence change as well. Next slide. Being an influencer for social policy. So this is the document um, that I was just speaking to and that we're here to chat about further today with you uh, with a purpose of providing a guide for stakeholders to see their role in influencing social policy. 
that supports injury prevention. So we're looking to, and we really want this document to help surface examples of the types of activities that stakeholders can participate in uh, that are directly or indirectly related to social policy. And also seeing and recognizing the opportunity for social policy and how it can further enhance collective collaboration in addressing all serious injuries across the region. So the document is going to and includes a definition of social policy as well as its importance and connection to injury prevention. It's outlining examples of activities that influence and support social policy and injury prevention. And finally, it provides an overall supporting overall support to documents and these definitions as well. How you can use the document, um, we do have a link uh, included as well in this presentation for you so that you can access this directly following the webinar, but ultimately to review it uh, would be ideal. Um, asking yourself the following questions from page three and reflecting on your role. So examining some of those questions, which include, are you passionate about the issue at hand? Do you have evidence to support your current position? Looking for and identifying some of those examples outlined under your current role. Thinking further and more deeply about your, your role and what you're doing and what you could do. Uh, and finally, learning about how social policy is created. So understanding, again, what Jennifer was saying, that to be an influencer doesn't mean you actually need to go and create policy, but you can have influence um, through promotion, collaboration, by informing, by becoming involved, supporting, and several other avenues of, of just influencing social policy. So what is an influencer? Um, an influence, influence is important to achieving any degree of widespread change with a particular issue or a cause. Being an influencer is achieved through promotion, through knowledge, collaboration, support, or involvement with a range of people, organizations, sectors, and institutions. Uh, and stakeholders each have their own unique level of influence based on these characteristics. So much like I mentioned um, in the previous slide, promoting, collaborating, informing, involving, supporting, those are all the ter key terms that sort of come, come to the forefront when we de are describing what an influencer could, could be. So uh, I do wanna point out that not all examples um, that we have or that we've, that exist are highlighted or are included here. However, we are going to pull forward a few of the ones that came to light throughout our work in looking at social policy specifically, uh, one of which being family resource centers um, and frontline public health staff. So we are well aware that these folks provide a vital link to individuals, families and organizations in local communities and how they go about doing so uh, includes what's listed here. So developing and maintaining meaningful community partnerships, and networks to increase collaboration, as well as understanding of community issues. They play a vital role in translating the understanding of individual family issues into suggestions for policy change at a population level, as well as using social media platforms to draw attention to the important pre injury prevention issues that exist. A uh, second example includes managers, uh, healthcare specialists, uh, injury prevention specialists. So these, these individuals would assist or do assist with the identification and action on injury prevention priorities. They provide support to staff to develop approaches for injury prevention initiatives. And some may have a leadership role in planning and decision-making processes. Um, ultimately, they're developing, initiating, and contributing to background documents, including position statements, where applicable uh, in an effort to increase understanding and awareness within departments, organizations, and that can be both internally and externally. Next slide. Um, and so next we have examples of um, stakeholders who may work with non-government organizations. Um, and these stakeholders um, are able often to act as a bridge between government and the public. So um, they can often have some influence when it comes to dis decision makers, but also have the voice of the public that they're able to bring forward. Um, they can often provide a venue for collaboration and the sharing of knowledge and awareness. So really bringing um, issues um, to into discussion issues that involve social policy or that would benefit from social policy. 
Um, and they can be champions um, to the vision principles and outcomes of social policies and help, helping make those connections. Um, there can be some human and financial resources to support advocacy actions for social policies. Um, there is opportunity for organizations um, to develop position statements. So um, really taking a stance on, on an issue and, and helping again, make those connections or making um, folks aware of the benefits of social policies or a social policy um, that may um, benefit a particular issue. Um, they um, may be able to provide evidence or context or expertise on a specific injury prevention issue that would support uh, a particular policy in the implementation. Um, and um, they may be able to develop, conduct, and support um, education and awareness campaigns that would um, call attention to a particular social policy that would benefit um, certain members of the population or um, vice versa, um, bring attention to a particular issue um, that would that could be supported by social policy. Uh, and the last um, stakeholder uh, role that we've highlighted again in the presentation, um, there are more in um, in the document. Oops, um, our physicians. Um, and physicians have a unique um, position when it comes to public health. Um, they often provide credibility to injury prevention in initiatives um, and issues. Um, so they may have the opportunity to work with communication teams and other stakeholders um, to communicate some of these important um, injury prevention topics, um, whether that be through media or through um, letters to the editor. Um, Often um, with their credibility, any sort of endorsement of a social policy approach, um, whether that be through a position statement um, and any external or internal communications goes a long way. Um, and again, being available to, to communicate um, and comment on specific social policy related issues um, in the areas of injury prevention um, expertise. Um, again, they provide um, some cre credibility and, and championship to, to this cause. So we encourage you to reflect um, and discover ways in which you could influence social policy for injury prevention or, or specifically fall prevention. Um, we can all have a role um, and certainly the roles that we've highlighted both here in the presentation and in the document uh, are not the be all end all. We, we, have, we don't have an exhaustive list and certainly um, they're probably roles that we have missed. So um, we just encourage you to reflect on this um, and, and start to think about um, activities that you may already be doing that you aren't even realizing that may be um, supporting um, this type of action. And so um, we believe that um, adequate investment into social policies can really help reduce injuries and other health issues. Um, certainly we're not the expert on social policy, um, but we've been able to make some of these links and, and our goal really is just to bring awareness to this lens. Um, there's a lot of great social policy approaches out there um, that could really be beneficial to our injury prevention efforts. There's a significant in interest um, that we've seen through our work so far in addressing um, injury prevention and fall prevention using this social policy lens. Um, there's also significant evidence to support the use of a social policy lens to address health, as we've seen through a lot of these social de determinants of health connections. Um, and there's lots of opportunity to continue this discussion and this work and continue to really learn, um, learn through our experience, learn from others. Um, kind of expand on this lens, um, you know, in, in, in our discussions through Loop, Loop Junior and, and any other networks. Um, and, you know, as Chantal mentioned earlier, um, you know, the goal of this presentation was really to highlight the information um, that we found to be useful in introducing the role of an, of an influencer. And so, um, again, this is really just meant to bring awareness to the variety and the perspective to these roles um, who, who, become, who can become involved um, in influencing social policy. 
And so some of our next steps. Um, so we will continue to um, look at those barriers and opportunities that came out of the survey. Um, and again, we encourage you to, to do the same. Perhaps there's um, opportunity for that coordination and collaboration piece. Um, continuing to gauge with members on loop um, to discuss social policy. Um, and we um, also did uh, specifically for fall prevention, um, we had a group of students work on an evaluation framework, um, looking at the potential impacts that social policies can have on fall prevention outcomes, um, which has never been done before. So we are um, certainly looking to, to be able to share that with you soon as well. Um, these are the links to the, um, the influencer document and the accompanying uh, infographic. Uh, we do have copies available in French as well. And uh, these are just links to some other resources that we've used um, in our work or this work has been built off of. So um, there's a report, um, the social terms of injury. Um, again, introducing the social policy lens, we first started with um, a look at seniors fall prevention and the social terms of health. Um, and as Chantal mentioned, um, the other report that looks at the links to children's fall prevention specifically. And now we will take any questions. Okay, hey, so before we do that, I just wanted to thank both uh, Chantal and Jennifer for such a wonderful presentation and um, sharing their extensive knowledge of social policy and, you know, examples of how to influence social policy in the context of injury prevention. So I'd encourage everyone now, if you have any questions, to submit, submit them through um, the Q&A box and Chantal and Jennifer will go ahead and adjust them. So... <clears throat> We do have um, a probing question, um, if we want to use that to help get us started. Um, and that was, you know, now that we've shared some of these examples, um, if there's anyone who may feel comfortable sharing, um, you know, some of the work that they may already be doing to influence social policy or how they, they feel they may start um, after, after this webinar presentation. as Jennifer mentioned uh, throughout though the presentation today that sometimes it's it's one of those things social policy can be one of those things we don't always know that we're doing but believe it or not we are doing more than we think so if you've given some thought to maybe how as mentioned how you you may currently be influencing it in your current role we'd love to hear that a little bit about that today if you feel comfortable with sharing There is a question coming through from Kara. Uh, any examples of action that were particularly influential or not well received or lessons learned from action that was a pilot activity? Uh, so we don't have any um, sort of evaluation yet of, of uh, of activities, um, more so just sort of an awareness of what activities um, are or could be. Um, but certainly we hope that some of the work we're doing around the evaluation framework, um, I know it's it will focus specifically on fall prevention um, among older adults. Um, and it does look at um, some more home-based social policy approaches like home repair um, programs, things like that. Um, that may be able to to um, shed some light on the impacts um, and there's a role in that framework for stakeholders and what their role is in those social policy actions. Um, but as of right now, we don't have any sort of real life experience and other than ourselves um, to say, um, you know, we're, we are continuing to, to work in small steps um, towards some of those social policy policy successes. But if anyone else has any that they'd like to share, um, that's a great question. That is a great question, yeah. I will say that in putting together the environmental scan on 
children's fall prevention and social policy work, it was, you could begin to sort of infer how you may go about evaluating some of that or how they might be, you, it might be used, some of those social policy pieces may be used and how evaluation could come from that. So it was interesting in that sense, but as far as a concrete example to give today or any sort of follow up as far as evaluation goes, we don't quite have that yet. Marguerite is asking for us to speak a little bit about uh, more about partnering with others to do promotion via social media. So, uh, for example, healthcare agency, social services. Power of conversation, I would say. I think in talking more about it and becoming a little more familiar with what it, social policy is and what it means and perhaps how different different organizations or different centers, different places are conducting it currently, if, if maybe they're aware or not, um, can have great power in that, I would, as a starting point. Um, we had another um, question in the chat box. From, I see that, yeah. Um, are there any targeted physician groups or group who should be, who, sh who should we engage within relation to social policy and injury prevention. Um, I think that's really up to, uh, again, um, your own sort of organization or, or role within, within social policy. Um, uh, certainly, um, if you do have partners or, um, you know, physician groups that are partners to your organization, or um, if you do work, so, let's say, for example, in a healthcare setting and have um, you know, access um, to meet with physician uh, or physician groups. Um, certainly it's always good, um, no matter um, what approach in injury prevention to have, um, you know, them on your side in terms of a spokesperson or, or to be able to provide um, their insight into, you know, what they see as a phys physician when it comes to injury prevention issues. Um, we also had a question around, um, are you looking at any potential technology product that can help injury prevention? Um, not at this time. Um, I don't know if you mean in relation to something like a social media or technology and how that can influence social policy. And certainly there's lots of opportunities to connect over um, technology and um, any, any platform to help communicate messages or raise awareness to the benefits of social policies within your province is, is helpful. Mm -hmm. I see a comment here uh, from Sandra Newton saying that as next steps, uh, I will reflect on the examples and see if I can frame what I do now in our program and how it may influence social policy. She'd also like to determine how to best capture this work uh, and see how our current work can evolve over time in an effort to try and tell a story. And I think that's such a great way to look at it as far as incorporating that evaluation piece into it. So not just doing the work, but also capturing essentially what this means and, and how we can move it forward even more. Um, we had, we did have a, um, a comment from the, and a question from the Q&A box around, um, sometimes there's quite a bit of emphasis on physicians influencing policy. Um, I wonder why a complex problem such as false can't be addressed in an interprofessional way. Is this bias in terms of medical hierarchy or is there evidence that MDs truly have more impact? Um, so for that, I, um, this was certainly, physicians was just something we've highlighted um, as a potential role. Um, certainly injury prevention, not just falls, should be addressed in an interprofessional way. Um, again, everyone has a role. Um, through our efforts, um, and certainly when it comes to public attention and, and communicating messages publicly, um, we've often seen more buy-in when, when there is a, um, a spokesperson um, who is a physician or or from a medical the medical community um, there has been some research done to, to say that the public has more trust in them when it comes to being a spokesperson 
Um, but they're certainly um, one profession um, within the public health and healthcare um, field um, that have a role to play in this issue and is certainly not the only, um, the only stakeholder um, that has to address or should address this issue. And Jen, there's a there's a comment here that I'd like to bring attention to. Uh, it's a thank you, and also a supporting example of collective injury prevention experts coming together. Uh, I'd like to highlight the work completed several years ago to change our national building code regarding stair dimensions. Through the Loop Network, we were able to seek public comments from a wide range of public health and injury prevention experts. Uh, for example, or, or referring to a proposed change to safer stair sizes. This change in step size in turn will significantly affect falls. The movement of the group collectively worked towards approving the change. Canadian homes are safer as a result of this policy change. Uh, and that's just, that's wonderful news and that's great to hear. I know that in some of the work that I've done and I've had um, students do on fall prevention and children and in specifically homes, that has come up quite a bit. We've looked at and examined the stair dimension size and have noticed a change in that. So that's just a wonderful example to highlight. And I thank you for sharing that. Are there any other questions or comments that uh, folks might like to share? Um, so Shamiza, I, I, I do have a comment or rather a question rather. So I know you guys talk extensively about, you know, how individuals can influence social policy, um, for example, you know, um, informing, promoting, um, supporting. Uh, and I know the document, you know, goes through how each stakeholder can do that. But can you maybe speak to some information provided in the document and how example, um, how exactly people can do that? Some tools some templates that are maybe included. So you don't feel so alone that there's actually some support in, in terms of doing that. And maybe even to position paper, social media. How exactly do folks begin to do that? Um, yeah, so um, the, in the document, there are um, some references to some templates, uh, one being a position statement and how um, certainly it's just one template of I'm sure many that are out there of, of how to capture some of those messages. Um, certainly, so an example could be, um, you know, if your organization um, is very active on social media um, and um, is, for example, in your province, let's say there's um, a call or you know there's a call or um, sort of an open form for, um, for people to apply for a home repair program. Um, so you have an opportunity to communicate um, that with a public audience or with a professional audience to say, you know what, these are um, this financial assistance through grants is available. Um, and here's how that's really going to benefit, let's say, some fall prevention efforts. So um, families of young children may be able to repair um, with that financial assistance something in their home, um, whether it be stairs or um, something that could be a fall hazard um, that could lead to a, to a serious injury. Um, or you may be able to raise awareness that, you know, um, let's say you are a government employee um, and you work in the health sector um, and falls is on your priority list um, and you sit around a table with folks, let's say, for example, in community services who may offer such programs um, as a home repair program. Um, there's an opportunity for collaboration there, um, bringing awareness to the fact that those, those home repair programs can actually help um, the work you're doing in false prevention because it can help reduce some of the serious hazards in homes um, to some of the most vulnerable populations for injury. Um, so those would be some of the examples. Um, there's also some definitions to some of the language that we've used um, in the document and certainly in this presentation as well that may be helpful um, if you're not familiar with some of the terms. Um, but yeah, there are some links to some other templates and documents that can help um, certainly get you started or, or thinking about um, some, some um, smaller actions that you could be able to, to take um, to participate. Great, thank you. And I'd actually to accompany that would, would suggest that 
earlier or kind of earlier in the document or in the in the beginning pages of it, it there's that text box or that box that has a list of questions just to sort of assess your personal level of readiness so it's not by no by any means not a, okay click yes and you're ready to proceed or not um, but it's a great place to start as far as maybe brainstorming or coming up with some of those ways that you might be able to inform promote collaborate and so on so it's a great area to just sort of begin that that introduction into social policy and um, determining where you might be at as, as an individual and then be able to influence perhaps in, in the profession moving forward. And that's great to hear about Alberta um, is also in the process of changing its national building code with regards to windowsills to help reduce pediatric falls. Mm -hmm. So if anybody, we'll, we'll leave the line open for a few more uh, minutes while um, I begin to wrap things up. But feel free to, if you have any last minute questions for either Chantal and or Jennifer, feel free to add them into the Q&A box. But in the interim, um, thank you to all of our participants you know, today for joining in and engaging in this really great discussion. Um, for more information about the fall prevention community of practice, please visit Loop and the website, the link to that is fallsloop.com. And uh, when the webinar has ended, you'll be redirected to Zoom and invited to participate in just a short evaluation survey. All you gotta do is click the blue continue button on your browser and you'll be redirected to the survey. So, you know, as always, we'd appreciate any feedback that you can um, provide so that we can continue offering high quality webinars. So uh, I guess we'll, we'll wrap up there. So thank you all and hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time. Thanks again, Chantal and Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks everyone for your participation. Thank you very much.